Hey guys, it is Danny and welcome to this update video. And so in this video, we're going to be talking about our two disturbances over in the Atlantic Basin. So both now have high chances to develop into tropical cyclones and are likely to become our next named storms, which are Nicholas and Odette by early next week and we also have hurricane larry which is a threat to newfoundland and then over in the pacific we have olaf which has made landfall and it is still a threat to the Baja california peninsula and so before i go into details <laughs> All right, so let's kickstart things with Olaf. And so let's look at the cone forecast from the National Hurricane Center. And so we're seeing here that Olaf has sustained winds of around 85 miles per hour, and it is accelerating to the northwest at 13 miles per hour. So it made landfall as a category two hurricane with winds of 100 miles per hour. And so it has been weakening since it made landfall because, of course, it is not getting all that moisture and that fuel it needs, which is the warm ocean waters. And so without that, uh, we is inevitable and so it is going to be so it is going to be lingering over the back california so going through most of today and then by early tomorrow it is expected to weaken back to a tropical storm while making its way away and then by sometime sunday it is likely to become post-tropical and so fortunately after Olaf is going to be making its way from the back California sur. It is not expected to be any more of a threat to land to anywhere. And so now let's hop over into the Atlantic Basin. All right, so we're seeing here that we have three systems to talk about. So we have Hurricane Larry as well as those other two disturbances uh, that have high chances to develop. So let's kickstart things with Larry. And so looking at the satellite imagery of the storm, we're seeing here that it is not looking the very best in terms of organization, but of course it is a weakening tropical cyclone. So we're not expecting to see Larry looking very, very strong. And uh, let's go to the cone forecast from the National Hurricane Center. And so we're seeing here that Larry has sustained winds of 85 miles per hour and it is accelerating to the north northeast at 26 miles per hour. So it's moving very, very quickly. And by late today, going into very early tomorrow, Larry is expected to result in some dangerous conditions in southeastern Newfoundland. So that heavy rainfall is possible, but it's really the storm or hurricane force winds that are going to be affecting Newfoundland. So if you're there, guys, please take necessary precautions and stay safe. But the good news is that Larry is going to be making its way out very quickly. And then it is forecast to dissipate and become a remnant low at the southern tip of Greenland. And so guys, now let us go on to our two disturbances. So we have that one that is yet to emerge off the coast of Africa, but will do so probably by later today. And we're seeing here that it is given a high 70% chance to potentially develop into a tropical cyclone during the next five days. And it is likely that by this weekend, probably by tomorrow or so, I wouldn't be surprised if we have a new depression or a new storm. And so it is likely that if this one develops before the one headed to the Gulf of Mexico, Mexico, then it is going to become Nicholas. So this has a slightly higher chance. So 70% chance. Uh, the other disturbance also has a 70% chance, but the chance through the next 48 hours is slightly higher for this disturbance here. And so if you're in the Cabo Verde Islands, you want to keep an eye on this because this could bring some dangerous conditions. So some heavy rainfall and some gusty winds are possible as a result of the system when it is going to be making its way by. And something important to note is the fact that the that shaded region that usually shows somewhat the track of the system has changed. So yesterday it was very wide, showing a wider range of places where we could have this thing going. And now it is more to the west, going to west-northwest for a track. So we really have to watch this during the next five days. I don't see this being much of a threat to the Caribbean as of now. But we have to wait and see what's going to be happening with the system here. And so looking at the satellite imagery of it right now, we're seeing that we have the system as I said, it's yet to emerge off Africa, but will do so probably by later today. And that short term storm activity is quite widespread. So the Cabo Verde Islands will certainly feel some impacts as a result of this disturbance. Not yet designated as an invest, but is expected to become one uh, probably by later today. It will receive that designation. And so let's go on to our other disturbance, which is located uh, just 
in the vicinity of Central America. So looking at the five-day outlook from the National Hurricane Center, we're seeing here that it is given a 70% chance to develop, as I said earlier, a 70% chance just as our other disturbance. And so it is likely that once it makes its way over into the southern Gulf of Mexico or the Bay of Campeche, that is where we could have some development beginning to take place of the system. And so if you're along northeastern Mexico or in southern Texas, you want to keep an eye on this. And by more of an extent, I would say uh, the Gulf Coast because this thing here can change. And we've seen so many systems that have affected the Gulf Coast already. So it is absolutely crazy to see all that is going on right now, guys. But we have to wait and see what is going to be the eventual outcome with the system here. But one thing for sure is that it is likely to bring some uh, continuous heavy rainfall to portions of Central America, including Honduras, Belize, Guatemala, uh, even probably down to Salvador. So we have to wait and see what's going to be happening in the Yucatan itself. So those areas are likely to experience continuous rainfall from the system here. So let's look at it on satellite. So here we have it and we're seeing that we have quite a bit going on. Uh, with this system here and so a lot of moisture in the vicinity of Central America also over in the Eastern Pacific as of now so of course no development is expected while it's going to be overland areas but once it makes its way over into the Gulf then those warm ocean waters are going to be fueling it and so guys now let's take a look at something quite interesting that I saw with the Euro model so this is a map showing the isobars and the isobars are lines of equal pressure and when and when you see them being closer in a circular manner with the pressure being and below 1013 millibars that is a low pressure system and can be a tropical cyclone so that is what we're looking for here so this is by sunday the 12th of the month and so we have euro showing that our atlantic disturbance is going to be developing once it emerges off africa and showing that that gulf system is somewhat starting to get in shape so let's go further out and as we go to tuesday the 14th of september it is showing that the Gulf disturbance is making its way into Texas as a weak system and then we have it showing that other disturbance out in the Atlantic not becoming anything too significant and making its way out into the open waters and it is not showing much after that but this is by the 20th of September the following Monday and so it is showing that we'll have another disturbance making its way of Africa and developing making its way up into the Atlantic but interestingly look just to the east of the Windward Islands that is quite interesting so it is showing probably a wave that's trying to develop or uh, probably on its way to the Caribbean so this is quite interesting to see so we have to wait and see what's going to be the outcome again this is not guaranteed to happen but in the month of September and today, which is the 10th, is what marks the peak day for the hurricane season annually. So the 10th, around the 10th right there, that is usually when we have most activity. Of course, not a whole lot is going on right now, but as we're going to be heading into the rest of the month, going into next month, we could have a lot more activity to come. And so guys, that is really it for this update and of course I will keep you updated as time goes by. And if you found this video to be quite informative, please give a thumbs up and you can also share your thoughts with me in the comments or ask a question. I will try to respond as best and since I can. And just remember to always be weatherwise.